It is time for the Midlife Hockey Crisis Beer League Podcast, brought to you by WinningSynthetics.com, your one stop for all things Amsoil, and TheHockeyArsenal.com. Now, here are your hosts, TJ Hollingsworth and Dangling Dave Dickerson. Take it away, boys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome, one and all, to another exciting action pack fun filled episode of Midlife Hockey Crisis Beer League on the Bench. I'm your host, TJ Hollingsworth, joined as practically always by my co host, the Dangling One and only Dangling. Dave Dickerson. Dave, joining me on the phone. What's up, bud? Uh, what's up, you big container of awesome? There we go. Much better. Much better. See, this is our second go-around at the start of the show because, well, let's just say Dave's been up for a long time, and we'll kind of leave that right here. You may, may hear... have inadvertently cursed. <laughs> may, may, have dropped, may have dropped an F-bomb on there that probably wasn't super-duper appropriate, but hey. We'll... <laughs> the other voice you hear laughing on that phone is good friend and fellow beer league hockey player. First year player just like myself uh sean zilster sean how you doing my man good how are you all doing this is a real privilege to be on here i appreciate it guys hey appreciate you being on here uh you know one of the reasons i wanted to have you on here sean is uh you you hooked me up with something that was really super cool to do plus your passion for the game uh reminds me a lot of me so the more of me we get on the show i think the better it's going to be and i think you're a reasonable facsimile so we can make this happen Absolutely, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. So anyway, hey, the reason that uh, the the reason we're doing the show right now this is this will be the first show that I think we've ever taped. Uh, it is Sunday evening here in Central Indiana, and this show will air Wednesday. So this is like real time. I wanted to do this um, simply because of the fact that what we're going to talk about uh, just happened uh, just less than a week ago. It'll be a week and a day by the time this show airs. But uh, Sean, uh, and, and I'll let ex- him explain how we got there, but Sean was able to get he and I into a pretty high-level game on a professional-level ice rink here in central Indiana, Indianapolis. We got to play at the home of the Indy Fuel, which is the East Coast Hockey League uh, team that resides here in Indianapolis, the Indy Fuel at the uh, uh, Indiana State Fairgrounds Coliseum. I think it's called the Farmers Insurance Coliseum now, or whoever sponsors it. It's, it's hard to keep track of that. Right. Uh, but the experience of playing on a professional level ice uh, was just absolutely amazing. And I wanted to get Sean in here because he and I both got to play. Dave, unfortunately, you were not able to make right. this one. I know you were invited a little earlier, but uh, things just didn't work out on the timing. So I know you're feeling a little left yeah. out. So I thought. Uh, yeah, I hate, uh, I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, hey, there's another one coming up, man. You can get into I'm in, yeah. Uh, I'm so jealous of you guys, but that's super cool. You guys got to experience it. It, it was really something. And again, and I, I've said this before, and I said this on the video, but Sean, thank you so much for getting me involved in that. Um, before we get too deep into this, so Sean, I just like want to back up for our listeners that, that aren't familiar with you. Maybe they haven't seen uh, you showing up on a couple of Instagram videos we put up on our on our page. Which, by the way, it occurred to me, I never ever tell anybody that we are on social media at Midlife Hockey Crisis, both on Instagram and on uh, Facebook. And you can also find uh, a little bit more about some of the other stuff that Dave and I are doing uh, with the tournament team, and that is at Highlanders Hockey Club. Did I say that right? Is that the correct yeah, address? Yeah, that? that's our Instagram page. Uh, we've got a lot of followers. Thank you guys all for following. But, yeah, we can connect both and chatter. Uh, amongst all of those yeah yeah and what we're planning on doing here is, is dave and i get a little more comfortable with this and, and, and I, th- I think we're getting to the point where we'll start recording these you know just a handful of days before they publish uh, as mm-hmm. we mention things videos pictures things like that we'll start making sure that those are available uh in real time so you can uh, you can also uh all these podcasts are, are available on uh on youtube now and i i do post some videos up there so uh, the game we're talking about i was wearing a, a cam box uh, helmet camera who actually fits inside of the helmet as opposed to on top of it and uh, I got a really some really cool video uh, uh, of the game that we're going to get ready to talk about but let's jump back to Sean Sean uh, let's start just tell everybody a little bit about yourself where you're from uh, what you do for a living and uh, and how you got into beer league hockey it you know <coughs> a little later in life like the rest of us well, my name is uh, Sean Zylstra. Uh I initially grew up in Colorado. I got on with United Airlines, went to the Bay Area. After September 11th, got laid off. United uh, came in Oakland, came here to Indy, got laid off, got on with Southwest Airlines. I've been with them uh, for, golly, 17 years now. 
That's a long time. Um, and so, you know, after all this all settled down, I, I got a, a little guy. His name's Brady. He's going to be seven in April. But Brady uh, got into hockey uh, from the guys I worked at with in Chicago. Uh, when I was working with Southwest in Chicago, I work with Southwest in Indy now. But they told me to get Brady in hockey. Uh, as Brady progressed, I was like, you know what? I need to... I need to learn this game. I need it so I can skate with my son. So when he's out there playing, I know what he's going through, what he's feeling, the rules, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. And uh, the journey that started after that of getting involved is truthfully the hardest thing I've ever done in my <laughs> life. There's not one easy thing about hockey at all, but it is also the funnest most addicting thing that you will ever do also dave uh, is any of this sounding so, familiar what's that I, I said i asked dave if any of this was sounding familiar absolutely it still is i still feel everything you feel man and dude you you can tell you're progressing you're working well man you you can tell you love the sport which is awesome oh so, it's, it's it's great i mean it, it is and you know what here's the the biggest thing and i i think i told tj this one time and once I got into playing some of these games, I was so scared to to initially go, like to you know the D League, and uh, when I showed up, it, I could not believe how awesome and kind and friendly and like you, look, I got to meet great guys, you, Dave, TJ, uh, several other guys. You can go on and on. Just what a great group of people I would have never met if I wouldn't have got into doing this hockey thing and, and the amount of help that people give you and the amount of input and coaching and it's, it's absolutely in, incredible. And I'm so thankful that I, that I started doing that. You know, that's interesting because uh, you said something to me that kind of ties in with what you, what you just said. I don't even know if you remember saying it to me, but we were having a conversation. I don't even really remember what we were talking about. But you said, Sean, you said, TJ, you said, you know, hockey's not just a game. It's really a lifestyle. And when you said that, a little <laughs> bell went off in my head. And I said, you know what? You're 100% right. And what you what you find, I think the things you were just talking about, is why people are so helpful because you know it's not just a game it's not just you know pick up basketball or or you know going out and hitting a golf ball around it becomes a lifestyle and and I think by nature you want to when you see people trying to get involved your most people's instinct is to kind of help them out I mean Dave I mean, I've heard you say similar things I think about when you got started right and that's exactly it it, it is a lifestyle um you know, I mean, you're practicing out there, you're meeting all these new folks and w unlike basketball, I mean, yeah, there's, there's similar similarities, in basketball running and all these other sports, but man, the thing with hockey is we, the folks that play know how complicated it is, know how difficult it is, know how, like, it is a very long road to get to a point where you're comfortable on the ice, comfortable puck handling, stick handling and mm -hmm. playing. So, you know, like folks like Sean, you, even myself, like I was super welcome when I went on my first team and it's the same thing. It's like, man, another one of us. Oh, I remember those days, another one of us, let's, <laughs> let's pave the road for him. And that's yeah. exactly it, man. It is a lifestyle. Well, let's fast forward. There's a lot of things that happen, and we're going to save that for another episode, Sean, because you're definitely going to be back on the show. But I want to get right in uh, to this opportunity uh, that presented itself. This goes back about three weeks, I think it was, and, and you came to me and you said, TJ, I said, I've been playing on Friday night uh, with these guys from, from Eli Lilly, which is a, a large pharmaceutical corporation uh, here in central Indiana, based in Indianapolis, actually. You said they play down at Pop Weaver. Now, uh, Pop Weaver is it, all, another uh, sheet of ice that's at the Indiana state fairgrounds uh which is where uh where the fuel play it's in a different building and they use it it's kind of an auxiliary i believe for the fuel but more or less it's really used they use it for public skating uh they have some youth hockey programs down there as well uh it services a different part of town than than where we play up on the north side of indianapolis um and you said you got to come on down check this out check this out so uh ended up going down and playing uh there on the auxiliary ice and it was great great group of guys uh, really high level too, which really uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't want to say blew me away because I didn't really have any expectations, but it was just really kind of neat seeing guys that are just recreational players that were that good. They're skating, and again, this is most of them. Of course, there, there, there's a few people sprinkled in that aren't quite as advanced, but as a group, uh, really good skaters, <laughs> <laughs> really good skaters, really good stick handlers. It was kind of neat 
watching people that it was obvious that they'd been playing for a long time. Sean, how did, how did you end up getting in, in, involved with this group? Well, so, uh, you know, I started playing. I, I met Matt Johnson because uh, his son, Ethan, uh, plays hockey. So I met them kind of at the ice rink. And then I met, you know, Matt and talked to him because he does goalie for D League. And he brought it up to me. He's like, Sean, you know what? You got to get on the ice. You got to get more work. I mean, that is, that's king is as much ice time as you can get. So he said, Hey, I play in this league that's Lily League. He said, truthfully, it is no faster than the D League. He said, it's really not, man. He said, you know what? You show up. He said, it's a good group of guys. Da, da, da. I show up. Uh, my wife came with me, and she walks in, and she's watching the guys warm up. And I walk out in my my hockey stuff, and she's like, hey, Sean, like, this is really fast. Like, <laughs> look at some of these guys out here, man. <laughs> so I walk over there. I go to go over to the bench and sit down. And the first thing after I sit down, a guy's like, hey, dude, you got to put on another jersey, go over, you know, to this other team. So I've been sitting for a minute with the, the – they had white, you wear a jersey or a lighter jersey. I was sitting with the darker jerseys for a minute. Got to know a couple guys, and I got traded over to the white team. I'm like, oh, boy. Just <laughs> so anyways. Hey, great meeting you. Too there, bad you can't stay. Start playing. What's that? I said, hey, great meeting you. Too bad you can't stay. <laughs> yeah, too bad you can't stay. But I went over to the other team. They were equally as kind and nice. I had a couple offside offside penalties because I was just kind of in a panic. I really was at, at the pace, like uh, how quick it was moving back and forth. But – uh, that's how I got involved, uh, Matt. And then after I went there the first time, and once again, another group of guys who and, and girls that were just awesome. And so I was like, I got to come back to this. I mean, uh, so it's all been great experiences. So that's how I got involved in that one. So we'll fast forward to uh, Indiana State Fairgrounds every year uh, about this time. They have a huge boat sport and travel show which ends up taking up the uh, the pavilion where the Pop Weaver ice rink is. So two weeks ago, we find out, hey, this is the last game uh, because they're taking the ice out for this because uh, they're going to park motorhomes and RVs in there. And they say, so the next two times we play, we're playing over the Coliseum, which happens to be about a 6,000 or so seat arena um, that the uh, the ECHL, the East Coast Hockey League, uh, Indy Fuel, uh, play on uh, for their home game. So professional level rink. So uh, all of a sudden, this little gem gets dropped in our lap, and uh, that takes us to, to, to where we're at now. Like I said, the videos we post on YouTube. You can just look up Midlife Hockey Crisis. You can see some of that. But um, uh, just an amazing experience. And, Dave, I know, you, I know you had a couple of questions about that, so that's what I wanted to jump yeah. into. So, Dave, take yeah, over, buddy. I kind of, I mean, I'm super jealous and I'm so happy you guys got to do it. I'll be out there at some point, but I do have almost like an interview format. Cause I'm, you know, the listeners are interested, but man, I'm super interested. So, uh, one of them was speed, you know, we won't have to get into the speed. I was going to ask you about that, but, uh, I want to know how is the ice? What do you guys think about the ice versus, you know, the stuff that we play on weekly? Um, how's the ice compared to all the other ones? Uh, and then how was it playing in the arena where you look up and you just see seats rather than just a wall? Sean, why don't you go first? I So, for me, like the ice uh, at Pop Weaver and the Coliseum is, it is awesome. Like, I don't know what it is. I haven't played long enough to know, but boy, it, 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 it's smooth. I don't fall as much because I fall quite a bit. <laughs> Uh, but it is, it's kind of a whole different experience. I don't know, you know, the freezing process, whatever they do. They do it really well over there, Pop Weaver and the Coliseum. It, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you, it, it's a lot of it. Ha- you know, obviously, it's all preparation. There's, there's really only one way to make an ice rink, and it's you get a very cold piece of ground, you spray it with water, and you keep putting layers on it until it freezes, and you get the temperature you want. I, I think the big difference uh, over uh, over this rink that we played on versus you know the the recreational rinks we played on is probably one. Uh, I'm sure the, the, the preparation of the ice is much more meticulous simply because, right. uh, you know, you are dealing with a, a franchise that's affiliated, and these are players that very easily could be playing, you know, in the AHL or the NHL, uh, you know, over the next 18 to 24 months. And I think the, the other side of that, too, is simply it just doesn't get used as much and abused as, uh, you know, say the fuel tank or the Carmel Ice Stadium where, uh, you know, by the time we play on it, you know, on a Sunday afternoon at, you know, at 4.30 – 
you know, it's already had, you know, five or 600 skaters on it, been Zambonied, uh, you know, 12 or 13 times already that day. And certainly, uh, you know, no offense to anybody that operates any of that equipment in any of those arenas, but certainly, uh, I'm, you know, I, I've got to imagine that, you know, a pro level rink is going to hire somebody with a little more experience preparing ice in, you know, everybody's got to learn somewhere. So where are you going to learn to, to drive a Zamboni to prepare an ice rink? You're going to do it someplace where there's recreational skating, recreational hockey. So I think what I, I'm, the only thing I could figure, and you know, if one of our listeners knows differently, please leave a comment or, or send us a, a message through Facebook or over on Instagram at Midlife Hockey Crisis. But I've got to believe it's just simply it's a combination of you know it gets you, the ice is used much less, so it certainly doesn't take near the abuse uh, that it gets with recreational skating and, and recreational hockey, and also just more experienced people uh, taking care of the ice surface. But it, it, just like Sean said, man, I mean the, the quality of the ice. Uh, certainly much smoother. Uh, you didn't you didn't have near as many of those flaws to where you end up with a puddle of water, or I call them speed bumps, where you have something you know you end up yeah. with a little extra humidity where water drips from the ceiling, and all of a sudden there's half a potato frozen. You know, yeah, you got those stalagmites. Oh stalagmites. my gosh! <laughs> and you never you never see yeah. them, but your feet fi- have no trouble finding them when you're skating down the ring for sure. But I, yeah. I, I certainly would say there. You certainly, I mean, the minute you step on that ice, Dave, you certainly can feel a difference for sure. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I, I've been on the ice a couple times. One was after a game, like a public skate with the players, and one we painted the ice. Right, that game. was so cool. Oh, but awesome. um, no, that's awesome. You guys got to skate on it. Um, you know, I am curious uh, the talent. So you guys did talk a little bit about the talent. Talk, walk about walk me through like the talent pool that's there from beginner guy to the A level guy, that kind of stuff. Who who'd you have to face? Sean, you take that when you play with these guys. I've only played with them twice now. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you it, it, the the great thing uh, that I've I've noticed playing in D League and playing with Lily is the the wide range of people uh, because it, listen, even on the D League, uh, there there is such high talent. And to me, who uh, you know, I just started this journey. Uh, I just sit out there and marvel. Any group I've played, the D League, when I've gone to Viper, when I've I've gone and played at Lily, I I. I'm amazed at the talent in all of those leagues. Um, I think uh, the the Lily League itself, I think um, you'll kind of get a mixture, and TJ can confirm what he played the other night. You'll kind of get these college kids mixed in there that work at Lily uh, or, you know, college kids that know uh, some other kids outside to play the hockey. So you get these really fast uh kids kids in there that are that have played at the Notre Dames that have played at some of these other you know collegiate programs that they have so but in other terms then you get to the guys that are just the normal sprinkle of um guys that just want to show up they don't keep score there uh that want to just show up and have a great time and that includes the college kids tj will uh, you know i think he'll agree with that they're a big group of guys that just want to show up and play hockey just like in uh, the other leagues i've played in just to to get out there on the ice and and play the game they love truthfully yeah i i'll i'll echo that too uh You'll have some guys that you know that are you know my I'll use myself as calling myself the old guys the old guys you know guys that are, that are fifty plus that you know have been playing their whole lives very competent and uh, you know just can skate can put the puck pretty much anywhere they want whether it's a shot or it's a pass and then you will get some of these younger guys and they're you know mid late twenties that are still pretty athletic and can pretty much torch anybody on the ice up and down without any yeah. effort at all. And it was my experience that a lot of those guys, they'd get a goal or two, and then they would start looking how they could get other people involved in the game, which was yeah. really, really cool. Um, you know, and probably the other cool thing about all that, too, was, and we kind of didn't mention this, it's a 90-minute game with no breaks. There's no periods. That we don't keep score. It's just, all right, we have the ice for 90 minutes, go. Uh, there is a referee nice. there, which made it really nice. But, yeah, the talent level was great. Uh, the thing I liked about it was it forces, you know, it, I felt it forced me to really skate my ass off just to keep up, let alone trying to get involved in a play. So uh, I, I think it certainly shows you that, yeah, you do probably have another level of uh, of intensity and effort that maybe you didn't think you had uh, that's there, and it's kind of nice to know, okay, that, that that that's there, you know, when you feel like you need it. 
Right, you kind of unlock it to the whatever talent you're playing against. I, I played against. So you've mentioned Viper. Viper's another league here in town. It's kind of a big group of folks that they're they're usually same guys, same girls, week after week for years. But uh, same thing, they're higher level, mixed group. Yeah. yeah, you. I played the other day, and I felt like, oh my god, I skated faster, I passed better. It's you know the level yeah. of talent will definitely make you better. So they're a great group too. Them. Man. Yeah, they absolutely are. So we do have some listeners there. So yeah, the Viper group is uh, outstanding. Man, um, I'll tell you. I do have a question for both of you. Uh, you know, you guys play against, and I, I do too. And I'll I'll leave my answers to you guys. But benefits and drawbacks of playing against people that are just far outclass you. You know, Ooh, give me some benefits one, and drawbacks. How about that? How about that one, huh? That's a good one. That, that's that's if if I had a gold star to give you, you would get it for that question, Dave. That's a good one. Sean, you go ahead. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to say the benefit is if these guys were people that weren't uh, wanting to uh, spread the the great game of hockey, um, I do not see – I cannot give you a drawback because – and I guess I've been lucky, but the people that I've got to play around and play with, no matter how good they are, it is amazing of – what they want to teach you no matter the 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 talent level it has been a group of great people that just want to pass on that passion of wanting more people to play hockey and to love playing hockey you have been listening to the midlife hockey crisis podcast we'll see you next period